players and also an explosive puncher. Of his Samoan heritage, he shall be called to the ring by his eldest brother. Sure, with a shell as our children, that we seem to miss a few notes. Of <laughs> you know, it's, 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 it works for him, he's a warrior. It's how they enter battle through the generations of warriors, and uh, it works for him. He's in the mindset now. He, he is a warrior. He's coming into battle, and he's coming into his, to his uh, traditional uh, music, a battle cry, and, and to him it's a war. And, and can I have a quick prediction? Um, heavyweights, any heavyweight lands another heavyweight clean, the other guy will go. He's going to look for the knockout. He needs a knockout. If Klitschko's sensible, boxes clever, and uses all his experience in ring craftsmanship, he could win maybe a boring fight. So. It's, I fancy Klitschko, but you know, I, you can't write this guy off, he's, he's come to win, he's got power, and he's going to go look for the big shot, and if he lands the big shot, I don't care who you are, you know, he, he'll take you out. Tyson, do you agree? What's your prediction? You know, you've got to agree with uh, Steve, this guy's coming, coming for a fight, and he, he looks like a really nice fella, and, and I hope he can actually land that big punch, because it'd be nice to see a new face in the heavyweight division, but I just don't think he's got what it takes to beat Vladimir Klitschko tonight. I personally think Vladimir Klitschko takes this guy out by a knockout. Thank you, Tyson, and thank you, Steve. It's now time to go ringside and join our commentators, Tim Capel and Richie Woodall. Well, it was in April of 2001, the last time there was one of the great upsets in the heavyweight division when he preoccupied by being in the presence of Brad Pitt and George Clooney. Lennox Lewis was stopped in five rounds by Hassim Ratman. But if Alex Leopold manages to land that Samoan bowler, who knows what will happen World here. Heavyweight Championship fight. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the reigning and defending IBO, IBF, WBO, WBA. Heavyweight Champion of the World. these days more like a rock star in these parts the immovable power in the heavyweight division Vladimir Klitschko mm -hmm. 
38 years of age He's now. Been the champion. Zehn Jahre ungeschlagen. Ich werde auch dich besiegen. said he wants to fight on for another decade he said his plan tonight is a slugfest he's prepared to go toe-to-toe -to -toe and turn it into what he's called a firefight to decide who is the bigger puncher here And now, ladies and gentlemen, we will honor challenger and champion with their respective national anthems. First, here to sing the national anthem for Australia, please welcome Kasinga Koloa Mangatagi. Too often you get the residents and sports fans of Samoa, New Zealand and Australia all sitting together rooting for the same man, but they are this evening. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here to sing the national anthem for Ukraine, a very special guest. Please welcome Natalia Klitschko.
Meine Damen und Herren, willkommen, Ladies and Gentlemen, welcome to the main event of the evening. K2 Promotions is proud to present 12 rounds of boxing for the heavyweight championship of the world. Sanctioned by the BDB and the WBA, the IBF, the WBO, and the IBO. At ringside, the three judges scoring this contest. From the United States, Glenn Feldman. From Hungary, Zoltran and Yedi. And from South Africa, Dion Duarte. And inside the ring, in charge of the action at the bell, World Championship veteran referee from the United States, Big Eddie Cotton. And now, for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white trimmed with blue, official weight, 112.5 kilos. His professional record, an excellent one. 30 victories, including 24 knockouts, with four defeats and three draws. From Logan, Queensland, Australia, the challenger, the Australian heavyweight champion and Asia Pacific heavyweight champion, the Samoan fighting prize of Australia, Alex the Lionheart Leopard. And fighting out of the red corner, wearing red with gold, official weight 112.2 kilos. His professional record stands at 61 victories, including 52 knockouts with three defeats, and he is undefeated during his 10-year rule as the heavyweight champion of the world. From Kiev, Ukraine, three-time world champion, the reigning, defending, universally recognized, undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, Dr. Steel Hammer, Vladimir Pichka. All right, boxers, you both received my instructions in the dressing room. I expect you to obey my commands. Protect yourself at all times. Let's touch gloves. I expect a good, clean fight. Let's touch gloves. Let's touch them. Leah Pye has done a very good job of turning the conversation and debate in uh, these parts around from what round is he going to get obliterated in by the vastly more experienced world champion to what if richie woodall what if can he do it has he got the potential to do it has he got a big enough punch to do it well he's got to punch his chance no question about that 24 knockouts in the 30 victories but it's a tall order the referee is going to play a very key role in this richie we saw in the fight with povetkin the referee's inability to get uh, in and actually stop Tuchko from holding on. Now, Leopold has promised to come out and start throwing right from the off. He expects Klitschko to come at him early as well. But how is he going to get under that ramrod jab? Well, he's got to have fast head movements, and, and his feet have got to play a part here. Quick feet into that inside position, and then whip that right hand over, over the top. He causes it some moment bolo shot, isn't it, or something like that, yeah. but it's just a right hand over the top, and he's got a good chance of throwing that, but it's got to be with fast head movement and fast feet into that inside position, then just whip it over. Get up, back up, back up, back up. And yeah, I, think, I think Klitschko will be vulnerable early on in this contest, first three or four rounds most certainly. It's plenty of been lining up to say that he's got to push the envelope here, Leopold, with the referee. But he's got to watch out for his balance. We've seen it on a number of times when he's been in the ring. The amount of power that he puts into this huge overhand right. Well, he's going to count that as a knockdown. Eddie Cotton is looking. He was unsure. 
He was caught then, was he, by a right hand. It looked very, very soft if he was. And Leopai... Leopai looks frustrated with himself. But it's already one knocked down. See, Leopai's got to watch out for that uh, left hook as well from Klitschko. He's using the jab. He holds the centre of the ring very well, Klitschko. And that's the shot that Leopai's got to throw. But he's got to force, try and force the taller man back onto the ropes. Because when he's boxing from centre, he's very difficult to get to. Yeah, they likened this to the night that David Tua came in and fought Lennox Lewis. He had massive physical disadvantages there with height and reach. Stop, 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 stop. Still a tough night for, uh, for Lewis, but Tua still couldn't land that huge right hand of his. Great atmosphere as ever, every time Klitscher gets in the ring here. Huge amounts of support. Well, he's practiced from Leopold early on. He's got flat feet, there's no head movement. He's in the center of the ring and no straight shots from Vladimir. He just can't, he can't miss the target. He's taken some good shots from the likes of uh, Travis Walker, although Travis Walker is in a completely different galaxy to Vladimir Klitschko in terms of punching power. But he does take shots. Boitsov caught him with a few good shots as well. At the end of the first round. And he got, a, he got lost a little bit there, did Leopai. You know, that was not down. To the millions of fans who make the Barclays Premier League what it is, thank you. From Barclays. Okay. Uh, welcome back. But they're talking in the corner about whether or not that is going to be counted as a knockdown there. It was, I think the referee was unsure and it's not been decided. I don't think, but here it comes. This was actually some other action from the round. Klitschko dominated the round. I thought Leopold came out quite quickly in the first minute or so, but then sort of slipped back a little bit and Klitschko took over. And his coach, Dan Tusner, said he's in the best physical and mental state he's ever known him to be in. But he's had a round to get used to his surroundings. He's now got to do something to let Klitschko know that he is in there. Well, there's too much distance in between them, isn't there, Richie? And it's yeah. easy for Klitschko to pick him off here. Well, he's very good, isn't he, Klitschko, at keeping the, his distance. And you see him on the outside there. He doesn't move back to the ropes. He actually moves around his opponent because he prefers the space of the ring, you see. And so he can see his opponent coming. That's a little bit better from Leopold. But again, Klitschko back to the centre. He's in control again. He knows, Leopold, the importance of getting in and trying to work to Klitschko's body. That was again part of his game plan here, but he so far hasn't landed a single shot on the body because he's not been anywhere near close enough to get one. And that's what he cannot afford to do, Tim. Just stand there at distance, just taking shots like that. Klitschko will eventually break him down. But he said, when I get hit, I get mad. He must be steaming in there now. And that again is another straight right hand. They're hurtful jabs also. There's power in those jabs. See, Leopold is just a sitting duck. He's got to up the tempo and try and put Klitschko under pressure, but it's easier said than done. Well, there have been times in his career when he's run out of gas in the third and fourth round. He's been living the life of a pro for the last 16 weeks only in a full-time training camp. This is just target practice at the moment here for Klitschko. Yeah, the only chance that Leopold's got here is if, at these early stages anyway, is if Klitschko gets complacent, takes things for granted, takes too many risks. But he doesn't take the risk. This is the problem with Klitschko. He's so safety conscious. He hits and moves and maintains the gap at all times. He, he's done it bout after bout, fight after fight. Long distance, long range boxing. This is a harsh dose of reality here.
truth, he's probably had a more difficult time during sparring than he's had here at the moment. You see, this is why, Tim, that the head movement from Leopold is, is crucial. Well, it's non-existent, but it's crucial when you've got a jab coming at you with speed and, and thrown with accuracy from Klitschko. You've got to move the head and try and avoid that shot. He's just taking every shot. He's hitting. Look, it's just too easy. Referees getting in, Eddie Cotton getting in there quite quick. It would have been good to see him uh, allow a bit of infighting there, for maybe for Leopold to try and actually get some work done. But he has barely thrown a punch as we come to the end of the second round here. Uh, you can see just how frustrated he is as he makes his way back to the corner, Leopold. driving should feel the all-new Nissan Qashqai the ultimate urban experience Nissan innovation that excites the all-new Nissan Qashqai what car car of the year 2014 good movement every time you said what I love break on him. level right hand right back with a jab your speed is too much for him he can handle your speed when you got the guy you faster than, use your speed against him. Well, so far, it looks as if his pre-fight prediction bank said, I don't think he's going to know what to do on the opening of the bell. It'll be like I'm here in the casino, I haven't got any money, but I'm just going to see what I can do. He's got no strategy, no plan. All he says is, I want to win and I'm going to hit you. And so far, that is exactly how it's played out here. Well, Klitschko is so dominant with his jab. This is the problem Le Leopold has got. He just can't get past that shot. And then you've got that strong, long right hand to contend with also. There's the movement from Klitschko, which is also impressive. Everything from centre ring moves around his opponent. And he's probably had harder spars. Plenty have been queuing up to give him advice. Leopold this week, including Lamont Brewster. Who is the last man to drop him? Well, it's just a matter of time, this is Tim. How much this fella can take, Leopold? Well, it was built up to be something in the last few days, but it is turning out to be nothing really. Well, he's taking a good shot and he's calling him on. And this, it is almost like a carbon copy of that fight that he had with Travis Walker. He was getting beaten all over the place. And then he exploded into life. He landed one big shot. And that is what everybody's waiting for here, just to see if Leopold can get in there and land this Samoan bowler. Well, the only chance he's got of, of landing that shot is that when, when Klitschko actually lands the jab. But half the time, you see, Klitschko is moving away. He's not moving on to the shot. So it's difficult to land the bolo if your opponent's moving away. Look, there's an example. He's just moving away from it, and you're never going to hit the target. You've got to try and draw your man onto that shot. And this is why Klitschko is, is so good in that he boxes safety, boxes to his strength. And he must be a nightmare to box against. He doesn't take any risks, Tim, basically. There he goes. Here you go. Oh, wow. Miss. Klitschko himself was talking about Leopold saying that really his career and his successes have been based purely on violence inside the ring. And this is why Leopold's got to try and push him back to the ropes and, and restrict that movement a little bit. It's far too easy, look, too, far too easy for Klitschko to walk in the park at this stage. Every single round won so far, even if they didn't count the opening knockdown as a knockdown. And that's where he's got to be careful. He puts so much into those punches that he can sometimes leave himself wildly off balance here by the end of another round where he didn't land a punch. Three rounds down, three rounds won for Klitschko. 
the annual company retreat. Planned, as usual, by this guy. Nature lover, people person. And you put up with it all. Because he's also booked you a room in this place. Planet Earth's number one accommodation site. Booking.com. Booking. Yeah. Leopold's corner saying there that they want him to get in closer to, to Klitschko and try and put him under pressure. That's fine. You, if you're walking down, you must move those feet quicker, okay? I haven't seen you right in once. The only way you're going to get it there is if you're walking down, okay? Yeah, walk him down, fair enough, but he's got to move his head because at the end of the day, he's just taking shots like these here. Little head movement. Well, he said he's only two legs and a heartbeat, Klitschko, and he is beatable. motivated man in front of him who has nothing to lose the threat will remain until he's either on his back he's out of the ring or the flight's over he's trying to walk him down Richie but he's getting stopped in his tracks isn't he Tries to go with the uppercut then, but it's all a little bit ugly. Well, he's getting worn down, worn down isn't he, by that jab. It's all right, his corner saying you've got to walk him down, but you need head movement, you need faster feet. Um, and the more shots he's taking, like I said, that jab of Klitschko is a, is a real hard shot. So he's just basically just dismantling his opponent here, bit by bit. Sometimes you get frustrated with Klitschko. You want him just to step it up a little bit, but he boxes to his pace. He dictates things, and that's why this fella has lasted as long as he has. Just over half a minute left there in the fourth round here. And again, wildly off target from Leah Pai. Right. And then again, Leopold calls him back. I mean, all credit to Leopold. He, he, he he's looks like, yeah, he's took a lot of hard shots. And again, terrific straight right hand from Klitschko. But it's all long range work. I've often said this about Klitschko, one of the best long range boxers in the game. But at short range, he's quite poor because he just grabs and holds and then pushes his opponent off again. Yeah, it's funny, George Foreman was saying this week that every puncher believes he's going to be the one that's going to put one on Klitschko's jaw, but few realise just what a good boxer he really is. Uplifted by new design, with a panoramic glass roof and more room. Space is a feeling. The new Skoda Rapid Space Bank, available from only £135 a month. Visit skoda.co.uk for more offers across the range. Skoda, simply clever. I don't know what to do. The personification of calm and in control. Let's listen to Jonathan Banks. Though his skills, of course, alongside Manny Stewart and uh, Jonathan Banks. And again, the message we heard from Leah Pye's corner once again it was the same as it was. You've got to walk him down, you've got to cut the ring off, and you've got to get in close, and you've got to try and work him to the body. It's the same simple set of instructions at the end of every round. 
Yeah, I agree with all that, what they've said, but you've got to avoid what's coming at you at the same time. And he, that, this is what he's not doing, look. He's just standing there, taking these shots. This is when the head movement has, has got to come into play and then counter off that head movement, make him miss, and then try and land that big shot over the top or work his body. I mean, the Samoans are tough guys. Remember David Tua? He was a real, really hard fellow. Never stopped in 59 Every contests. Trying to tempt him out of uh, retirement yeah. at the moment to uh, take part in a, uh, a Super 7 over in uh, New Zealand. But again, these physical advantages which Klitschko enjoys over his opponent here are just too big a gap to bridge. a little bit and maybe that's going to be the moment now Klitschko comes back lands a big right hand of his own but he, that was him getting stung into life there because for the first time Leopai landed one on him oh he's taking two oh, big right hands there huge right hand and Leopai is down is he out is he going to be able to get up Eddie Cotton's over him he looks okay does he know where he is, what day of the week it is? What a round, round five, it's exploded into life. What a response here from Vladimir Klitschko, and he's finished. His knee, Leopold should be over, he's down for a second time, and he is surely out now. He looks at his corner. This tremendously proud Samoan, it is over. Yeah, Another awesome. successful defence, but... We had a moment in there which will certainly have Tyson Fury salivating sat back in the studio. Well, that's the type of punch that he needed to throw. It was like that bolo right hand over the top that nearly connected. It was inches away, but that sort of sparked Klitschko into landing a couple of big right hands of his own. And it's the, it's the difference in class, you see, because the, the quality and the accuracy was from Klitschko. When he let his right hand go nice and straight, direct to the target, bang, it hits home and he put his man down. The, the, the big question that, 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 you know, not only casual fight fans want to know is why do we have to wait, or why does he wait until moments like that? Why doesn't he come out and do that, get him out and go home early? Well, yeah, but that was a terrific one-two combination there from Klitschko, but that sort of sparked him into throwing that shot through that right hand that, that Leopold tried to land. But these, these were quality punches from Klitschko that finished the job off. It's the accuracy, the timing, and the power was all there. And we said a few rounds ago, didn't we, that it was a, just a matter of time before this fella eventually crumbled. Hard shots from Klitschko. There's a long left hook, and then he finishes with the right hand. That's the second knockdown that finished it. And that was it. So, there was to be no roar on the roar from the Lionheart, Alex Leopai. So we might get a look at that punch that he that very nearly landed that just did wobble uh, Klitschko and it will further enhance the view that if you can get somebody in there who is of the same physical makeup and build as he is, uh, then he's well, going to give him a problem. I, I said, didn't I, it, it's about with Klitschko, he could get complacent, he could take things for granted and he just let his guard slip a little bit there, lap, laps in concentration and it almost connected, it was that great right hand over the top but it didn't quite Tim, I think he was more stalled about, about the shot himself, Klitschko I don't think it wobbled him to be quite honest but there was a sign there that that's the shot that, that, that Leopold needed to try and land but uh, what followed that then was, was just pure class then for, from Klitschko, terrific shots so the big upset then was not to be whatever motivation he said about Klitschko. He said he's going to have to rip my heart out to win this fight. And I think he did just about break him. There was no chance. And he could tell pretty much right from the opening bell. Yeah, another good display from Klitschko. Didn't take it, any risks at all, did he? You know, one, of the, one of the things that really did wind him up and his cap up this week, one of the big uh, American TV networks uh, was previewing this fight, and apparently they spent, well, about three and a half minutes discussing this and the rest of the hour talking about the next set of opponents uh, that he was going to have throughout the next 18 months. Well, let's hope one of those next opponents 
is, is someone like Tyson Fury, who I, I think will give him all sorts of trouble. Tyson Fury is six foot nine, he's a big, strong, powerful man. He's also a good boxer, and that would be a different challenge, a different obstacle for Klitschko to get over. But he, I mean, he's, well, he's 38 years of age now. You know you're, you're going to get two fights out of him a year over maybe the next couple of years. Uh, there's, there's talk about reunification with, uh, or, or unification bout. Uh, Chris Ariola's fighting in a couple of, in a couple of weeks' time, uh, and he wants to take the belt that his brother's given up. Of course, he's, he's retired, so that presumably would take that into uh, maybe an October, November uh, fight. And he's in a position where he can just pick and choose. Well, also, you know, we have Tyson Fury versus Derek Chisora, July 26th. That's going to be a cracking bout. The winner of that then may have a shot at Vladimir. There's Bermain Stavern against Chris Ariola that's going to fight for the yeah, WBC yeah. title on May the 10th. So, yeah, there's good fights out there to be made. I think uh, the British lads are, are definitely in the mix. This guy, you know, he can't keep going on forever. He's 38 years of age. He's still boxing tremendously well. But we, we listened to what Tyson Fury said in, in the studio earlier, and it's going to be a younger, much younger man that's going to come and, 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 and take the tile. And you have to agree with that, because at the end of the day, he can't keep going on and on and on. People do will criticise the, the opponent here tonight, but again, remember, this was a mandatory defence against a, a mandatory challenger, so he can only go in there and beat whoever is put in front of him. Exactly. You know, at the end of the day, um, he doesn't pick the opponents if it's a mandatory. The um, governing body does, and Alex Leopold had a great victory against Dennis Boydsoff. Yeah. That got him the shot. Up until then, though, he hadn't really boxed anyone of world class, um, and it showed in there t tonight because he had the will, but certainly didn't have the way. He didn't have the skills to get around Klitschko, didn't have that head movement. It was only a matter of time, but you have to um, say it was an impressive finish. Yeah, huge amount of self-belief from Alex Leopold coming here. It reminds you of that great quote from Joe Frazier when he was talking about one of his opponents. He said, he said his mouth made him feel like he was going to win the fight, not his hands. I had my hands, my fists and my punches. He had his lips. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic, yeah. But this guy just keeps going on. What is it, 10 years now yeah. since he was last beaten against Lamont Brewster? Um, but people, people are going to go back through this. The, the, the boxing press, the boxing media, the trainers, the, the potential challengers. The one thing they're going to pick out of this fight isn't the two knockdowns that he inflicted on Leopai. It is going to be that one moment where he, he landed that punch, albeit fleetingly, it wasn't a, a firm connection. And they're going to say, there it is. There's the weakness. We've just got to find a way of getting in there. Yeah, I, t I agree with you, Tim, but I think also you've, you've got to set a higher pace against the Klitschko. He's the one who dictates things. He's very clever at that. He holds the, His ring position is fantastic, holds the centre of the ring. You've got to put him under pressure. There are faults with him, but you've got to expose them and pressure box him most certainly. Then I think he could come undone a little bit, but when he's boxing from the centre of the ring boxing at his own pace, dictating things, he's totally in control. When he's boxing at long range, he's literally unbeatable. You've got to force him into those short and mid-range areas where he's got to work, where he doesn't want to work, basically. So it's complete opposite to what we saw when we were doing the, the Povetkin fight last, where Povetkin was, did manage to get in and cut the ring down, but he spent most of his time in an arm lock. Well, yeah, you know, I think it was a bad referee performance there also, but Povetkin failed on the inside. There was loads of opportunities for Povetkin to work, but he didn't take them. Let's get it right. It wasn't totally uh, holding by Klitschko. Povetkin could have worked on the inside, but he didn't. But a shocking performance from the referee also, I thought. Well, he said he wants to fight on for another decade. We're just going to wait to see if we can get a, an interview here. A few words from the man Vladimir Klitschko. And Ladies and gentlemen, left. at two minutes and five seconds of round number five, Referee Eddie Cotton waves off the count following the second knockdown of that round and calls this fight the winner by knockout victory and still recognized as the universal undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, Vladimir Dr. Steel Hammer. So many people have got a recipe for his undoing, yet nobody has yet managed to get close. And their pre-fight predictions turned out to be right. Jonathan Banks saying 
he simply won't know what to do at the opening of the bell. I mean, he walked across that ring with a degree of intent, but as soon as he, as soon as the movement began, as soon as Klitschko got into that groove and kept him at the...